Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, every state school in England will become an academy and be removed from local authority control by the end of 2022, whether they want it or not. This unprecedented change to the education system was confirmed in a white paper unveiled by Education Secretary Nikki Morgan today. Rather than the perverse situation which persisted before in which schools were islands and stronger heads were unable to spread their reach and influence, the weaker schools were left to languish under the monopoly of local authority control. We now have a system where the best leaders can take control of those weaker schools, turn them around and in doing so transform the life chances of young people that attend them. Outstanding sponsors, great heads, successful trusts aren't constrained by geographical borders. They can extend their reach to wherever they're needed, wherever they can make that difference. And the proposals have already been criticised by teaching unions, opposition politicians and some educational charities. So why, in the cases of thriving schools, is the government apparently eschewing the age-old adage that if it ain't broke, you don't fix it? And what does the future hold for our children? Schools Minister Nick Gibb joins me now, along with Newsnight's Chris Cook, who broke this story on Tuesday. Um, Nick Gibb, just to clarify, the last Labour government introduced academy status for schools that were adjudged to need it. The coalition government extended academy status to schools that really wanted it. Your government is now imposing it on schools that neither need nor want it. Well, it's an extension of the <clears throat> successful policy of the last five years. We want to give professionals the autonomy to run their own ship, to run their own school. And well, head they, teachers... They, they, they do already have that. Well, this is giving them more autonomy, and successful head teachers who run their own school flourish when they're given the, all the freedom that academy status has brought. And that's why we're seeing those convert academies, these are good schools that have become academies, their results are something like seven percentage points better than other schools. And what this does, it gives head teachers the, the freedom to run their own school, but also to extend that winning formula to other schools in multi-academy trust so we can take what they're doing, the successful way they're running that school, and apply it to weaker schools in the area. We want educational excellence in every part of the country and we need the help of those outstanding head teachers to, to enable us to do well, that. What does the lack of freedom look like at the moment for a headmaster? I mean, head teachers in this country possibly enjoy more freedom than, than any other head teachers in the in the world. So, so what, are the, what are the lacks of liberty that you're targeting well, today? Uh, academy freedoms mean a freedom over the curriculum, it means freedom over what they pay their staff and the budgets and things. They have much more control of the day-to-day -day running of their school. And those head teachers that have had that freedom, uh, they love it. They, they flourish as professionals, the school improves dramatically. But the but key there, thing... There are plenty of academies that aren't flourishing, just, there just are, for the record. The, well, it, there are, and one of the great things about the academies programme is that we take very swift action to tackle underperformance. We've taken new powers in the Education Act, we've just had Royal Assent, to enable the regional school commissioners around the country to take action, even changing the sponsor of an academy if it's weak. We've already so done that. This is my original point. The powers yes. are already in place to help the schools that need it. The, the invitation is already in place to help the schools that want it. Why this element of compulsion? Why are you forcing it upon schools that are already performing extremely well? I mean, just a sort of cursory glance at the de your own department's own figures shows me that of, of the school bodies that are both fastest improving and most successful, um, it's an overwhelming majority of them are local authority run. All the laws of logic would suggest that you take the massive majority success and make everybody else emulate that. You're doing it the other way around. Well, those figures, of course, have take, when you look at those figures on a local authority basis, we have already taken out the worst performing schools from local authorities. So we can play with statistics, but I no, can I, take No, we're you. not playing with statistics. Well, I've looked at the Department of Education's own figures and, and the four quartiles quite clearly have. dictate that every school is included there. The worst performing, the best performing, no, the fastest we've, improving, we've, the most slowly we've, improving. We've taken the worst performing schools out of local authorities, <laughs> so of course their schools look better. Look, I can take you to Academy Chains, ARC, uh, Harris, they have taken underperforming schools. They're the good ones. They're the ones in the graph alongside yes, uh, about 30 odd local they have authority taken schools bodies. that are underperforming, they're in special measures. They transform them in two or three years into outstanding schools. Now, we want that approach to happen right across the country in all parts Even of the country. Even when head teachers don't want it and haven't asked for it. 
Yes, because we want those head teachers to help us to improve the system right across the country to apply. But these what are the head doing. teachers of the best schools in the country in some cases. Yes, and we want them to help us improve those underperforming schools in their area. And that's what this white paper we published today is yes. all about: spreading that excellence right across. Every child only gets one chance at an education, and all of us have to work together collaboratively. Well, of course, these are given to spread well, well, the things that are working in those high-performing schools. Where's the evidence? The evidence is that, take, take for example, in uh, primary schools that are underperforming, have uh, been made into academies with a strong sponsor, they are improving at twice the rate of primary yes, schools. But the that system are not already academies. accommodates them. Where's the evidence that taking a primary school that's all very, already very good, but the, the one my own children go to, for example, and forcing them to become an academy is going to somehow make a very good school well, even again, better? Again, I told you, those schools that have voluntarily become academies, they're called converter academies, their results I'm are not, 7 percent better. With respect, better Minister, than I'm not the, asking about the voluntarily right. changing schools. I'm asking about the schools who are quite happy with the situation yes. as it is, who have been told today that they can't carry on as they are quite no, happily and no. successfully. They have to change for reasons that. I'm, I'm failing to grasp. They have to change because we, uh, this is a five-year plan, of course. We want schools to be part of a collaborative system, the multi-academy trust system, that enables us to take what's working in successful schools and spread it to, to those schools that are underperforming. They should not be any underperforming schools in our system. And all of us in teaching, in the education world, have to uh, work together to make sure that every school, every local, that's what parents want for their children. They want education. They want to know that their but, local But I am a parent, and I'm telling you that my children's primary school is brilliant. Why do you need to change it? Because we want that school to be helping other schools that aren't brilliant. That's why. You're lucky that your child goes to that school, but there are many children who go to school in, in parts of the country uh, that are not... And, and failing well. schools can already have a canopy status they in, can, imposed need, upon them. But we need more good schools to help those failing oh, schools I, I to become see. good schools. Chris, Chris Cook, you, you broke this story. Your previous life, of course, you were the education correspondent on the Financial Times. Um, have you dug into the detail of these proposals? Yeah, and there are, there are some very big risks that the Minister, I'm sure, is going to be cognizant of. So the first, I think one of the biggest is that the, the academy chains are just not that big and not that good at the moment, particularly outside London. So the Department's own research, as you said, shows that there are, there are only three chains that reliably, on the Department's own figures, are both uh, improving results faster than national average and doing better than national average, and they're all in London. Outside London, there are no academy chains in that position. The second thing is that this is going to put an enormous amount of power with the Department for Education, and it's going to require an enormous amount of um, implementation uh, administration to change sort of 15,000 odd schools from one status to another. And the Department for Education is, uh, I'm not sure how you respond to this, but it's a sort of, it's a catastrophe. It's one of the worst departments in Whitehall. It loses money, it struggles with budgets, it's very, very bad at doing some quite basic administrative things. And this is a very big implementation risk to this policy. Well, over the last five years, there are 1.4 million more children in good and outstanding schools today than there were in 2010. We have reformed the primary curriculum. People, children are reading better. 120,000 six-year-olds this year alone are reading more effectively than they would have done without our reforms uh, that emanated from the Department for Education. We have reformed the GCSE qualifications that are putting them now on a par with the best in the world. And, and as a consequence, more young people are receiving a better education. Now, what this white paper is about is ensuring that we take the successes of the last five years and ensure that they apply in every, parts of the, every part of the country where for years they've been languishing with some but, but underperforming schools. That's what this is about. Surely the successes of the last five years point to the current system being effective. Well, we've got 60%. We're not in need of root and branch change. You mentioned GCSEs. Yeah. It's not just GCSEs, of course, that your department is currently changing. There's, there's A levels, there's mm -hmm. league tables, there's um, funding formulas, there's cuts, there's, of course, your, your own department describes frequently the workload crisis that teachers are currently facing. I think there's changes mooted for primary assessment as well. And against that backdrop of, mm -hmm. of epic change, and difficulty, you're insisting, insisting, Minister, that every single state school in the country undergoes a quite complicated legal process that many of them have absolutely no desire to undertake whatsoever. Well, you say cuts, £1.6 billion pounds of extra funding for schools. It was quite a long list. You're welcome to pick on one <laughs> word in it. But, but I think uh, the, the, point the new formula ensures that we have a much fairer system of funding schools. Uh, there has been a lot of change in, in terms of the curriculum and the exam system over the last five years, and a lot of it is coming uh, to fruition. Uh, now, so primary schools are preparing and have been so preparing during for the this last time two of years. Epic flux, well, why impose such a well, complicated legal process? Well, those are reforms to the curriculum, and what, what we also say in the white paper is there'll be some period of stability in the next five years 
uh, at least for the curriculum as those well. changes embed and teachers begin to you know, learn how to teach the new curriculum. So we have promised that. But at the same time, we have to make sure that, that the excellence we have in the successful schools in this country are spread to every part of the country. And that's why we're changing the teacher training system, the okay. qualification system, to make sure every school is a good school. While I have the pleasure of your company, Minister, you, you, you saw with me the film that we made about the disability cuts and indeed some of your parliamentary colleagues expressing grave misgivings about them. I, I, I mean, it's a while since I did maths, but the back of a fact packet calculations I've done see about £4.4 .4 billion effectively being taken from disabled people and about £5.5 billion effectively being given back to relatively high earners. This is the return of the nasty party, isn't it? It's not at all. The, the, the personal independence payments will be going up in real terms in every year of this Parliament. Uh, and there are more people in receipt of, of disability benefits uh, as a consequence of, of what's been happening in the last few years than before. We're spending £50 billion pounds a year on, disa of them on disability. Money. Well, there has been some judicial cases in recent Lots years that have extended the wealthy. personal independence payments that we introduced to help disabled people deal with the extra costs of day-to-day -day life as a consequence of their disability. Some of those judicial cases have extended personal independence payments to people that aren't uh, having to incur extra costs as a consequence of their disability. And that's why the government has consulted on how we address that issue. And the government will be consulting disability groups and members of parliament as we come to implement those reforms. Nick Gibb, many thanks indeed. I've been getting away with it.